I finally got pregnant at 39, and my husband said the unthinkable to me. Yikes, seriously? You're knocked up? That's insane. Let's get a divorce. What the? I don't want to deal with the troublesome child born at an older age. So long. I was in despair. We had been together for ten years, but there was no marital bond between us. My only hope was the life in my belly. I was going to do whatever it took to make the child happy, even if I was alone. I vowed to raise it with lots of love and care. Twenty years passed, and my child grew to adulthood. I bumped into my ex-husband. There was a woman who was disproportionately young and beautiful by his side. He looked at my adult son's face and then at mine and exclaimed, Whoa, you really did have a child. He's insane. Well, I can see that he is managing well, but is he without any disability? After all, you're still a caregiver, right? How pity. His never-changing abusive remarks came out. My gut boiled. But before I could slap him, I noticed the woman beside him turned pale. What the hell? Don't you know who he is, huh? No. My name is Emily. I'm a single mother of my son. I had dreamed of one thing before my marriage, to have a happy family with a husband and kids. I didn't mean to wish for anything grand. A kind husband and a handful, but loving children. Maybe two. It had been my dream for many years to fulfill my simple wish. I had no major drama in my life. My parents raised me in an ordinary way with two older sisters. I wasn't craving anything. I just wished to have ordinary happiness as a woman. My husband and I were both 29 when we got married. It was an office romance that led to his proposal to me. I am more of a square-headed stubborn person, and he is more carefree. We were seemingly ill-matched, but to me, his spontaneous personality was very appealing. At the time, he had something I didn't. I was also a little impatient, being about to turn thirty. After we were engaged, we spent the picture-perfect days from meeting each other's family to the wedding and honeymoon. I had no doubt that my wish would come true, but reality didn't work out that way. Are you pregnant yet? Andy asked me in our bedroom. Or are you into our marriage? I felt a sting in my heart. We were open to having children from the beginning of our marriage. Not only was it my dream, but his intention was to have them as soon as possible. The fact that he once mentioned it would influence his career bothered me a bit, but he was positive about it. We never missed an opportunity, even if the pace was a bit overwhelming. Still, there was no sign of conception in my stomach. Maybe there is some problem with you. That's something I'll have to look into properly if you say that. You've got to help out, too. Whether or not we have a baby is both of our responsibility. Are you saying I got a problem? No way it can't be me. I'm not saying that. Isn't it usually an issue on the female side? If you're going to the hospital, make sure you get checked properly. I can't last long if I have to keep shooting like this for nothing. Oh, <laughs> don't say it like that. My heart sank at his vulgar remark. We had no idea which one of us had a problem at that point, yet he sounded like he'd already decided that it was my fault. He blamed me because I couldn't conceive like the average woman. I was driving myself crazy and was slightly neurotic. I went to the hospital numerous times, but the doctor couldn't find anything obviously wrong with me. When I told Andy this, he reluctantly went for a checkup as well. But both of us turned out to be fine. Eventually, it was determined that the cause was unexplained infertility, and we subsequently proceeded with combined treatment, including timing therapy. Having to go to the hospital so often to estimate ovulation dates was stressful for me. Also, it was very uncomfortable to act upon it after being urged that those days had a good chance of insemination. 
I felt like a robot. Andy didn't seem to mind and never showed any care when I was down after our time together. Around that time, he often used his busy work schedule as an excuse, started to be more absent-minded while with me. One day, after ten years of marriage had passed in this way, I was told, No way, I'm pregnant. When I heard the result of the test at the hospital, I was too astounded to realize that I finally got my long-cherished wish of over ten years. I couldn't think straight at first. It was way overdue. For ten years, all I could think about day after day was getting pregnant, and I was repeatedly discouraged by the test results. Those days finally paid off, and I was blessed with the long-awaited baby. Twelve weeks pregnant, it was an irreplaceable treasure for me. I joyfully called Andy to share the news. Listen, honey, I'm finally pregnant. We're having a baby. Hold on, I'm in the middle of dealing with some issues at work. Tell me when I get home. I was taken aback by his stoic response. Did he not care about our pregnancy, even though it was a long-awaited first child? I tried to think that he was just too busy with work, as he said. It was my fault for calling him out of the blue. I was sure that he would be as happy as I was when he got home. But when he came home, he puzzled me with an unexpected question. Are you seriously considering delivering that? That? What are you talking about? Are you referring to our baby? I mean that in your stomach. It's going to cost us to have that. How dare you? It's a long-awaited baby. Of course I'm going to keep it. It's been my dream. Think about your age. Do you remember how old you are? You are 39. 39 years old. That's already too old. It's not the right age to have a baby. That's not true at all. I am not young for sure, but it's becoming normal to have a baby at 39 nowadays. My doctor even says there is no problem so far. So far, right? Who knows what would happen later? What are we going to do if a child is born with some abnormality? It's just going to be trouble for us. I felt like I had been stabbed in the back when he said those words, abnormal and trouble. Was he referring to children born with handicaps? If so, his choice of words disgusted me. I answered in a stern voice. It's not up to us to choose what kind of child will be born. Even with a handicap, I will still love my child the same. That's what being parents is all about. I've heard that line somewhere. You are such a smart ass, no matter how old you are. Your only strength is having virtue, which made me want to marry you. But I'm so fed up with it now. Fed up with me? If you want the baby, go ahead. But I want nothing to do with it. That baby is yours, not mine. How can you be so awful after ten years of trying for infertility? Too late to produce result now. If an abnormal baby comes out, we become the caregiver for the rest of our lives, aren't we? We're supposed to have kids to take care of us in our old age. I was speechless by his idea. He thought the kids were just tools or something. Then I remembered when we were newlywed, he made comments about having kids that were tied to his career at work. Apparently, in his mind, they were just things to help him in his life. I couldn't hold back my anger. I wanted to slap him, but before I could, he confronted me with something even more painful. If it comes to this, there's only a divorce left. I've been really sick and tired of you. When you couldn't get pregnant, you were depressed. How can you expect me to stay married to an old woman who finally got pregnant? Do you really mean it? I sure do. Let's go see a lawyer now if you want. But I never agreed to alimony. I suffered for ten years with your infertility. I should be the one who will be compensated. You're such a... I was beyond disgusted and speechless. I had no problem getting rid of a husband like him for the sake of my unborn child. 
It would have been wise to leave such a father once and for all. A month after I found out about my pregnancy, we filed for divorce. I didn't ask him for assent, as he wished. In exchange, I got him to agree that he would never have any contact with our child. He laughed and eagerly accepted it. But I never wanted my child to know that the father was awful. After our separation, I went back to my parents' house. They, both well over seventy years old, welcomed me back with open arms. Just coming out of a terrible ordeal, their warmth made me cry in front of them. What I went through was dreadful. I wailed, clinging to my parents, but I never forgot to be strong. From then on, it was a duty of a mother. I promised myself that no matter what kind of child was born, I would make sure that he or she and I would be happy together. Then a long time passed. Twenty years after the divorce, my son Terry grew up without a problem. Andy's concern was unfounded. Terry was born in perfect health. Rather, he was too good to be my son. He had done well academically since he was little, and when it came to athletics, he was as good as anyone in his grade. He was also humble and didn't let those things get to his head. I love that about him most of all. No matter how capable a person was, it didn't matter if his character was crooked. I was so relieved that he wasn't like his father. In that regard, he considered going to college. But there was something he was passionate about and chose to go straight to work. I felt a little disappointed, but I decided to quietly watch him do what he wanted to do. He was determined, and I had no say in it. If he happened to stumble, only then could I reach out to him. I had never needed to worry about him in the past, anyway. Two years after he started working, I was out shopping along with him, who was twenty years old and all grown up. My birthday was coming up soon, and he was going to buy me a present. You've been nothing but caring and supportive to me, he said. I was easily moved to tears by his words. I was sure he had some hard times in his life, coming from a single-parent household. He did not show it and grew up very happy, so much so that I couldn't think of a better gift. Hey, Emily! It was then that I heard an unexpected voice. I ran into a familiar face at the entrance of the mall. The shivers ran down my spine when I saw Andy, still smiling in that same leering way after twenty years. There was a young woman I wasn't familiar with beside him. What the heck? Your little bastard is still alive and well. As soon as he saw Terry's face, he lively blurted. At that point, I thought about punching him in the face, but I held myself back because I was in a panic. Above all, I couldn't let Terry see such a disgrace. You still look as gloomy as ever. You haven't seen me in twenty years. Why can't you try to be friendlier? I know you can't do that, which is why I left you. I have no recollection of being left by you. I was the one who gave up on you. That's why I've never reached out to you in twenty years. That's what's so dreary about you. Well, I've changed a lot since then. I have a new wife and a kid who's about to start college. You have a very young wife. Wonder how you fooled her. Don't be jealous, Emily. Can't help it. I'm popular, right? My wife Susan and I got married when she was twenty-five. It was right after our divorce was finalized, so nineteen years ago. I'm still thriving at night. I don't want to know such a nasty thing. Remarry or whatever? Not my business. You've been irrelevant to us anyway. Hey, don't be like that. I do sympathize with you. It must have been hard to raise him on your own. On top of it, that kid is a failure. Does he still need nursing, or can he at least change his own diapers? How dare you! I lost my patience and was on the verge of throwing the bag at him. 
It was Terry who stopped me immediately. Even after hearing his father's harsh words, he remained resolute. Calm down, Mom. Don't take anything this guy says seriously. As you said, we have nothing to do with him. Oh, a failure can speak properly, can't you? Who told you to say things like that? Your doctor? Maybe your nurse? Don't bother us anymore, and don't you dare come close to my mom. If you ever bring any harm to her, there will be consequences. What a joke. What kind of boy like you do against me? You are a failure from birth. I'm a police officer. When Terry told him, he clearly became agitated. Terry went into the police academy right out of high school. He wanted a job where he could help people. That was the path he chose. Instead of going to college, he had graduated from the police academy and was on duty at the local precinct. It may have come as a surprise to Andy, but even more surprised was Susan, who stood quietly beside him, listening to the conversation. She was holding her mouth and pointing her finger to Terry's face. Her fingertip was trembling. Police officer, he can't be. Are you my father's... What the hell are you saying, honey? This bastard sure can't be connected to your father. You are in trouble. Don't cross him. You could even lose your job. Calm down, honey. What are you suddenly... She dragged Andy by his arm regardless of his inability to get her point, and they kept walking away from Terry and me. Andy's confused expression until the end made an impression in my head. I, too, had no idea what just happened. Susan seemed to suddenly run away from us as soon as she recognized Terry's face. What's going on, Terry? Do you know that woman? I don't know. She mentioned her father. Maybe she met the chief. What he said actually told the truth of the matter. It wasn't until a week after we encountered Andy that I learned the details. I received a call from Andy for the first time in 20 years. Please, Emily, let me speak to my son. What's going on? What do you want from him after all this time? I'm about to lose my job, he sobbed as he continued in a desperate voice. To sum up his story, his current wife Susan's father used to be a police officer, moreover. He was a big deal, as he once had the title of chief of police. There was a new cadet whom the former chief had a great deal of interest in, and that person was my son Terry. Soon after he was posted, he took credit for catching an arsonist, becoming a well-known local police officer. Early on, that caught the former chief's attention, and Terry was taken care of both at work and privately by him. Of course, I had heard about this from Terry before, but I had no idea that the former chief was Andy's father-in-law. Furthermore, according to Andy's story, the former chief was even planning to set up a marriage for Terry and make him a son-in-law out of love for him. The former chief had a granddaughter in college, and it was an open secret among the family that he would be perfect for her. Of course, he didn't hear that much. I heard my father-in-law is very fond of Terry. He found out that I dumped you guys 20 years ago from the incident the other day. He's outraged now. The old man is long retired, but he hasn't changed since he was a hardcore police chief. I'm sorry to hear that. So what are you trying to achieve by talking to Terry? I want him to talk to my father-in-law, having a position to get a job from him. A job for the security company, you know. Cops have strong connections to each other, don't they? If I get on his bad side, I'll lose my job. That's your own doing, isn't it? That's how little trust he had in you to begin with. If you were recognized as a decent person, your son's story wouldn't cost you your job. Don't say that. My wife is also very upset when she found out about Terry, she asked me how I could behave like that toward my son. She was the one who told her father, If things continue like this, my wife will leave me too. 
She's making a wise decision because you could be like that with Terry. You might eventually do the same to her child. What goes around comes around. Why don't you just gracefully remove yourself from the equation? Hey, if that happens, would you mind if I live with you at your place? I can't live alone. It's too lonely to be alone in my old age. I'll take good care of Terry, too. Bad. He will be fine without you. Having said that, I tapped on the end button. Andy was ranting to no end. I turned off my phone as well and decided to ignore his calls. To be honest, he deserved to be in the situation he was in. He had caused Terry and me so much pain in the past, so it was his turn to be punished for it. Even if his family threw him out, we weren't going to help him. I was sure that even my son wouldn't want to help people like him. Later on, I heard a rumor on the wind that he was on the street. His wife apparently dumped him in no time. There was no doubt that the former chief had his way. He had even talked to Terry about it. Terry didn't tell me the details, but just said that I didn't need to worry about it anymore. Nearing sixty years of age, Andy lost his job and family. It's too late to regret that he should have been happy about my pregnancy back then. Terry and I are living our own lives. We already have a little happiness. It's not exactly what I envisioned a long time ago, but I'm content. My proud son continues to do his job to the best of his ability, for people and for society.